Hi guys, Stats here. Today we're going to be looking at the introduction to water pH, how to test it and what to do with that information. So a brief introduction to what is pH. What is it? Well, pH is the measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ions, power of hydrogen, pH, or the potential of hydrogen. So basically, um, the, the greater the concentration of hydrogen ions, the lower the pH score is. Here's a pH scale for reference. So more hydrogen means more acidic and it is a negative uh, base 10 logarithmic scale, which means that a difference in one on the scale, i.e. four to five, represents a 10 times four to five decrease in concentration of hydrogen ions, or you know, four to three is a 10 times increase in uh, concentration of hydrogen ions. G great, so what does that mean for brewing? Distilled water is considered to have a neutral pH, which is a pH of seven. Anything below seven, uh, zero to seven, uh, is considered an acid, and anything seven to 14 is considered an alkali or a base. So what does that matter in brewing? So when you hear about pH in home brewing, you often hear people uh, talk about numbers like 5.2, 5.6, uh, or a range between those two values. Um, they're talking about the ideal mash pH. Uh, and that uh, helps the enzymes which convert the raw starches in the grain into fermentable sugars and other uh, compounds which are useful to have uh, for the yeast and, and everything else in the beer. Over the course of the brewing period, the pH uh, of the, the wort and then as it ferments into beer, it, it does drop at several stages. So we start with water, we go down, we add our grain, and the pH will drop because of that. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the mash will happen. During the period of the mash, the pH will drop a little bit more. And then as the wort comes up to a boil and hops are added, pH drops again. And then after the boil, it's chilled and then the yeast is pitched. The fermentation process drops the pH again and we end up with a final pH of beer around the four, sort of four to 4.5. How do we get from our water with a, with a pH of seven to eight down to our ideal mash pH of 5.2 to 5.6? Well, the grain that you add to your beer actually will acidify the water. It releases hydrogen ions. Base malt does it a little bit. Specialty malt does it a little bit more. Roasted, dark roasted malts have a really high capacity to reduce the pH into the acidic levels. Because of the Reinheitsgebot uh, purity law in Germany, uh, brewers weren't allowed to add anything except for malt, hops, yeast and water into their beer. So uh, malts has actually started to acidify malt which is called acidulated malt, and that's used to drop the pH even further than what would normally be uh, capable of with your standard malts. However, if you've decided to take control of modern techniques rather than living in the past, you can also adjust your mash pH or lower your mash pH using acids, like this one here, this is phosphoric acid, and you can also get lactic acid. Uh, just bear in mind they come in different concentrations, uh, sorry, different dilutions, so you'll need to uh, work out how much to add based on the dilution that you have available to you. Uh, if your pH is too low and you want to raise the pH, you'll need to employ something like calcium carbonate, known as chalk, or sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. Bear in mind that um, they aren't always soluble in uh, water, so you might need to add them with the, ma with the mash and uh, give them a bit of extra encouragement to help them dissolve, otherwise it might throw off your pH reading. 
So all this is very interesting, but how do you actually go about taking measurements of your mash and when should you do it? Well, there's a couple of different ways. We'll start with the second question first. When, it's probably best to do it between 10 and 15 minutes after you finish mashing in. That gives the, um, the pH time to sort of stabilize um, across the, the whole volume of your wort. Now, uh, there are two basic ways that you can do it, that you can measure a pH. The first and simplest is little pH strips picture here. They are really cheap and uh, inexpensive and easy to use. They don't need calibration. However, you need to make sure that you are using the correct ranged pH strips. You can get general ones which range from I think 1 to 14 or 0 to 14 but they're not going to allow you to see the fine details, you know, the difference between maybe 5.2 and 5.4 or 5.6. You take a sample of the liquid that you want to test, you dip the, the strip in there and it'll change colour, uh, it'll, it'll turn a colour, then you match that colour with the sample guide that's provided with the pH strips. It's Like I said, it's really simple, it's fast to do, um, but when you're dealing with, you know, is it 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, sometimes if you're in poor, poorly lit places or maybe your eyesight's not so great, maybe you're even colorblind to a certain extent, it's a little bit hit and miss or a bit of a guess. That's the downside. You can also go with a digital um, pH meter, one like this from Hanna Instruments. Now this is their basic introductory a digital pocket tester. So it gives you much more accurate, easy to read results. Uh, it does require uh, calibration every time you use it. So you get these uh, pre-mixed uh, solutions just to calibrate your pH meter. And of course you need to keep it clean. So it's a bit more faffing about, but it allows you to get a much more consistent and easy to read uh, data point for your beer. So these digital uh, pocket testers, they're more expensive. Uh, they range anywhere from $40 up to several hundred dollars. And you might be asking, well, what's the difference between a $40 one and a $400 pH meter? Well, that's in your the, f the features that it has. This only will measure um, the pH and that's about all it will do. The other thing that uh, you're paying for is, of course, the detail in the resolution uh, of that reading. Remember that uh, the pH is a logarithmic scale, so a difference in 0.1 is actually quite a large difference. So um, the basic uh, handheld pocket ones have a, a, ra um, a range of plus or minus 0.2. I think that's what this one is. Um, and then the ones that are quite expensive, you know, several hundred dollars each, go down to 0.01 and even 0.001. So you take your pH reading after sort of 15 minutes, and then what do you do? You can adjust uh, it if it's if it's a long way off, and you want to sort of minimise the effects of uh, having a, a drastically out of spec pH throughout your beer um, by adding either an acid or a, an alkali uh, to adjust the pH. Uh, but generally speaking, if you're trying to get that most efficient mash. Uh, conversion in that sort of 5.2 to 5.6 range. By the time you've uh, taken your, waited for the, the mash to equalize out and then you take your sample, by the time you actually go to add acid in, it's probably about 20 minutes. Your mash conversion is, the majority of it's already done by that stage. So if it's only a little bit out, it might be better off just to make a note of how far out you were and next time you brew it, make some adjustments to hopefully pull that uh, pH better into spec. However, there are calculators out there. There's ones in Beersmith, there's ones in Brewer and Water and Brewer's Friend. Um, they allow you to input your recipe along with the starting data points for your water that you brew with. Now these can be uh, acquired through your local water municipality, although they're pretty 
um, rubbish in terms of getting accurate numbers. They're usually averaged over a year or so, and depending on how reliable your water source is, it may not be so good. Uh, you can also, if some people start from RO water, which is just has nothing except water, pure water, and some people use distilled, which is more or less the same thing. Um, you can get your water tested, send it off for testing, uh, and you can buy um, some self uh, water testing kits, uh, like this one here. Once you've got that information, you can plug all the the values for the various minerals in your water into these softwares and put in the pro the water profile maybe like Burton on Trent um, it might be better to just go for a, a color and a style like you know you know amber hoppy or dark dry um, and the software will calculate the additions that you need to do so that you add them in when you're adding the grains into your mash to hopefully get quite close to um, the desired pH. Keeping track of your pH during brewing is really something that you need to kind of take detailed notes and try and get consistency in terms of, I know that my water is about here and this is what I'm trying to get, so I'm gonna add um, these minerals to try and bring me down to the right pH or even raise me up to the correct pH that I want. And so you sort of dial in your own process based on your water and the beers that you're trying to make. So that pretty much wraps up the introduction to water pH and how it relates to brewing. Hope you found this video interesting and informative. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you hit the uh, like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. If you have any suggestions for future videos, also leave those uh, in comments down below. Uh, anything that I've talked about uh, regarding testing your water pH, whether it be pH testers or calibrating buffer solutions or phosphoric acid or lactic acid or acidulated malts, um, I'll have links in the description um, to help you find what you need to get brewing and to pay a bit more attention to your water pH. I'm Stas from Stas Brewing, brought to you by Beerco, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.